I'm CG Matter, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do edge erosion and erosion on the surface. The algorithm for edge wear is you take your mesh and you find edges that are very sharp in a sense. We are then going to thicken them, vary the radius, remesh just for safety, apply one more distortion, and we're going to take the original mesh and cut out the new one, and that is edge wear. For the face erosion, we are going to spawn points all over this mesh. We're going to get rid of some of them, remesh that point cloud using SDFs, add a bit of distortion, and again, take our original and cut away this. This video is brought to you by Squarespace, but we are going to talk about that later. So for our starter mesh, let's do something simple like a cube, which can then be swapped later. I need to isolate the sharp edges here, which in this case is all the edges. So I'm going to take the edge angle node, which can give me the angle of every edge. I don't care about the sign if it's positive or negative. I just need to know, is this angle bigger than a certain number? This will be in radians, so it's not like zero to 90 degrees, it's zero to pi over four. So I'm just going to make this a value like 0.6 for now. We are then going to isolate these edges by doing a separate geometry and let's isolate the edges that fit this criteria and then you see there's still remaining faces so I am going to delete geometry all the faces so delete faces only edges or I guess only faces now to check that this is working I'm going to take my cube and add some divisions to it so something like four by four if I look at the result you can see it's only those harsh edges it doesn't care about the ones in the middle okay now let's make them solid in a sense wonder 5.0 boasts about the tube node I'm not I'm not fucking with that I mean look look at this so what I'm going to use instead is if you go to my website, cgmatter.com, so cgmatter.com, you go to free nodes, you can get all the nodes I use for absolutely free, you don't need to be a member. And then with that, I'm going to use my tube node, that's going to require that the input is a curve. So we're going to do a mesh to curve, and boom, let's see that in solid view, we are going to decrease the radius, fill the caps, and now we've solidified this. In a case like this, and this is very important, these curves aren't going to connect. And because we're doing booleans, ideally with manifolds, we want it to be one solid thing. I'm also going to use my SDF remesh node that just kind of voluminizes this and then increase the quality, divide this by 10. This is kind of like a resolution slider. And you can see we got really good geo here. Now you can see this isn't very detailed. It's going to work. We can cut one thing from another, but I want more variety. So in this curve tube node, you can see we can control kind of the size of this. Let's use a noise texture node to decide that radius, connect that into the radius. And we got to make sure that, you know, by default, it's around 0.02. So I'm going to map range to kind of constrain this 0.01 to like 0.02. You're going to see this doesn't like really do anything like it changes it a little. This is because our curves don't have any geometry, right? There's one here, a point here, there's nothing in between to give it resolution. So finally, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run a resample curve for like 100 points or something like that. Let's add even more variety. This can go lower, this can go a bit higher, and we want to bring up the contrast. So 0.4 to 0.6. Now that we have that, it's always a good idea to consolidate. So I'm going to turn this control G into a node group. The only thing I would like to control is probably the kind of maximum angle. And this can be called our edge selector. And then once we're happy with our distortion, this can also be a node noisy tube. Please don't call me that. Lastly, we have our SDF remesh. If you see it inflates it a little, you can use this threshold slider over here, which basically says how tight to the mesh should you go. Since the 0.01, let's do 001. Finally, let's add a bit more detail with my distort node. Again, cgmatter.com. I'm going to take the strength, bring it down a lot, maybe bring up the scale and the detail. And then finally, of course, bring this down even more. So now if we take a look, we have our cube, we selected the edges, we turned it into a mesh, we turned it into an SDF that we distorted, and now I just cut one from another because these are both manifold. They're good meshes. They're a good little mesh, good little mesh. I'm going to run this through a mesh boolean, taking the difference between our original and our distorted one. I would highly recommend using the manifold mode, and let's see what that looks like. So now we have this nice edge wear that if I go into noisy tube, add a multiplier to the radius over here, set this to multiply, make that a parameter. Now I can vary the radius on on the fly procedural erosion on the edges. Now the key part of this is it works on any mesh, any mesh. If I take this cube and I replace it with a cylinder like this, you can see now it's eroded only the sharp edges, not these ones over here. So if I was to take this angle and make it like too small of a number, you're going to see it kind of does this to every single edge, which might be what you want. I assume it isn't, so I'm going to get rid of that. In fact, I'm going to get rid of the cylinder and use a group input, which is going to let me model my own thing. I can then take this, I can inset, I can extrude, and on the fly, it's going to add that erosion. Let's take
like this, do a vertex bevel, just like that, and you have your nice procedural erosion. Notice this isn't going to work on very smooth surfaces because our edge angle is quite big, but if I was to bring this to zero, you can see all of a sudden we have erosion everywhere. And now I'm going to move on to face erosion, but before you do that, there's something you need to know. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, best place to make a website. In fact, you already heard me talk about my website, cgmatter.com, where I said you could get those free nodes, and I have a member site that Squarespace helps me make. So this is where I have all the exclusive stuff you can download. Squarespace makes this easy because they have their own built-in payment platform that lets me do this like membership thing. You can see they also have an asset browser over here where I can store all kinds of assets, PNGs, GIFs, files. If I'm to make a new page, you can design whatever, but I'm just going to add a blank section. And then to that, I'm going to add a text block, put that over here. You are going to notice that there's AI integration natively, so I can edit, turn on this AI thing, tell me about CG Matter. Oh boy, what's it going to say? CG Matter is a content creator and educator. Damn right I am. If all this sounds good to you, head over to Squarespace, make a website, and when you're ready to take that and launch, use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And now let's do face erosion. The logic is going to be pretty similar. We're just going to use different things to cut away. So I'm going to take all of this, maybe make it a nice node group. I can call this edge erosion, which you would add parameters for. Goodbye edge erosion, you've served us well. Like I said, for this one, we need to spawn points on the surface. I'm going to distribute points on faces. Just make that a ridiculously big number. I'm talking like 1500 or something like that. And this will dictate where our erosion is going to be. I don't want that everywhere. So I'm going to delete geometry. Where am I going to do that? You ask? Well, I'm going to use a noise texture. Turn off normalize so that this is positive or negative. Delete or don't delete. Connect that here. And now when we play with this, you can get rid of points in different areas. In fact, we can bias this by adding or subtracting something. So now you can see we're getting rid of more or less. And then this needs to be made into a mesh where we can cut one thing from another. Well, the new 5.0, at least as of recording, SDF nodes are great for that. We're going to run a points to SDF. This will make it a nice volumetric that you can kind of make the impression of this. For the size of this, like how far away from the points are you looking? You could just plug in the radius, which we can modify on the fly. And we're going to take our voxel or our resolution, kind of like the inverse of it, like the size of a pixel. And I'm going to bring that down. Now we're going to clean this up in a second, but for now, let's run a grid to mesh, turn it into an SDF grid, turn it back into a mesh. SDF is just a nice way to go back and forth. And now you can see our initial point cloud that we called turned into a mesh. Take the voxel, make it smaller. Now it's higher resolution. And our radius, since we're using that, let's make that smaller. So set point radius, divide that by like three. Let's go a little higher so that they're more connected. And now we're going to take our original mesh, which is the torus, and of course, subtract away this. The way we constructed this is it should be a very nice SDF should be. Connect this here, connect this here, and set this to manifold. And now we preview that, and now we have very nice face erosion that we can change on the fly for erosion. Now, if you're seeing kind of these hovering pieces, right, that means that our point thing kind of has holes in it, which is fine. Like, there's holes between the points. Bring up the density. Now, the quality of this erosion is going to be fully dependent on our noise texture. So if I bring up the detail, and then I bring up the roughness, you can see now it looks more cut out. That's going to be more obvious as I take our SDF and bring up the resolution, and it computes quite fast fast, and we haven't even baked it yet. One thing you might notice is wherever it's eroded, it kind of goes to the same depth. And that makes sense because our guiding points are all the exact same radius. So what if we took our like SDF grid and the radius that's driving it, we just vary it a little. I'm going to take the radius and we got to be careful. We're going to multiply by a random number. So they're not all the same, maybe like 0.5 to 1.2. And now let's do a comparison before, after, before, after to get this even higher quality or more erosion. Here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take our point cloud. And this is something that I can also distort. Run my distort node inside of here, make that very tiny, more detail, more roughness, and then even tinier. So before, after. Now, if you look at our erosion, you can see we're kind of breaking up the pattern a little. For even more detail before the distortion, you just add a bit more geo with a subdivide. And now you have more, you know, detail. So let's get rid of this torus and do something simple like a cube. I'm seeing that the splotches are a little too, I don't know, they're splotchy. <laughs> so I'm going to take the noise texture. I'm going to bring down the scale, bring down the detail a little. And now you can see these chunks are a lot bigger and we can take that much further. So we erode only a section of it. And then we also run our edge erosion and that's that. But right now this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to take everything we did here, control G to make it a node group. So now we have the whole dream team and we now want to delete some of the floaters. Here's a little floater, for example, the way we isolate it even visually is we say, ah, this little island over here, much smaller than the rest. In other words, I can take the mesh island node that will tell us what island does each 
belong to. You can see that different islands, so this one's purple and then this one's yellow or whatever, um, have different values. And then for each island, what I can do is I can accumulate on every island separately the face area. So face area like that. What does this mean? This means that the total is going to give me the total surface area of each island. And if that total is very tiny under a threshold, then we're going to delete it. Delete geometry. If the total is less than, we'll figure out what that number should be. So if I set this to one, that already cleans it up perfectly while preserving the whole thing. So here I've taken my mesh and absolutely destroyed it. If I use my delete geometry, you can see automatically it cleans it up actually surprisingly well. So I've been CG Matter. This has been Edge Erosion and that's about it. Join CGMatter.com. I will see you next time. Okay, bye.